Hi, I'm Rickus. Today I'm going to show you guys how to install the styles on a BB92 bicycle. Okay, so always try and add grease everywhere. Everywhere the parts are touching, everywhere there's threads. It's just much easier for assembly, it's better for the mechanics. Always add grease. Okay, so here we have the BB92 option that we'll be installing on a Rocky Mountain Slayer today. This is uh, one of our Enduro bikes that we purchased a while back. Very good bike to do a conversion kit on. Very stiff rear end. Uh, super capable. So, here you can see the full kit with the controller installed already. So, the adapter plate is not added yet. So you will see there's a space to slide onto the bike. For this bike, we've already installed the adapters. It was just a simple press fit. And then this allows for the motor to just slide in directly. So as you can see, super easy. Um, something else to mention, this bike does have ISCG mount. So we have two mounting positions for the controller. One is slightly higher for better uh, ground clearance. But if you do have ISCG mount, you can shift the controller down and the motor can still fit on ISCG mount. Okay, so effectively the motor is made for BB92. So what we've done is when you press in these cups, we have a wall thickness of one. So after having both cups in with the bottom bracket, we're now at a width of 94. The BB92 option shares the same 100 mil spindle. So what we'll do is we'll add another three mil, taking it to 99 millimeters, and then the BB cup will take up the last millimeter. This one we add some grease on the front. And then we do one spacer. This one is going in. Okay. Okay, before before tightening the BB cup you put the screws in. So one important thing to note is there's a spline on the spindle that's supposed to mesh with the torque sensor inside. So when you put in the spindle and it becomes difficult or hits a hard stop, maybe the splines are not aligning. Sometimes you need to locate the splines. For example, okay, it's not fitting in, you move it a quarter turn, most likely it will go in. So for example, you hear there's a hard stop. I will just move it slightly, see if it goes in. And then there, you hear it, it mesh with the spline. Now for the final bit, we will add uh, a, a preload and lock ring. So you'll see these threads located on the spindle. This guy threads in on here. And then what else this does is it's pulling the spindle into the assembly. So you don't get lateral play after some use. Um, so what you can do to preload is we cut a hole on the back here, you can put a hex key inside and then just lightly preload to make sure it's tightened and that the spindle is fully in. You don't want to tighten it too much because if the bearings are preloaded too much it will degrade its life. Then after preloading there's a little lock nut here that you can tighten. All the torque specs will be included online and then now it's locked. The spindle can't go out and in and your, your bearings have been preloaded correctly. After adding the lock ring, it's time to add the crank arm. Again, we suggest to add grease on the splines because when the arm is tightened, it helps to slide the crank into position. Then you also need to add another spacer which will space the crank up to this marker line. So what this does is there's a ISIS spec which requires a shoulder for the crank arm to rest on so when you tighten to torque spec it will rest on this space ensuring that the crank arm cannot go loose.
this side the same principle applies, but we have a physical stop machine into the spindle, so there's no need to add a space or anything to stop the crank, it immediately rests on this end stop. For the other side we need to add a spacer and retaining lock ring for, of some sort because the spindle needs to slide all the way through the assembly. So again, just add grease, add the crank, tighten all the way to the end stop and then talk to spec. One quick tip is you loosen this one on both sides. What this does is it allows for the CNC piece to pivot. So while you're tensioning the two on the top, it allows for the hanger to find a kind of find its natural position. Then after tightening both so it's nice and secure, you can secure the bolts on both sides. Final steps, you need to find your quick link and then use your chain breaker to split the chain to get it through the chain ring in the front. I suggest you use the smallest cog in the back so you don't fight the derailleur when you do it. So just split and then thread it through. And then just remember if you're running Shimano chain, there's direction arrow on the chain. Make sure the logo faces outwards and you actually have the chain running in the correct direction again. One of the biggest advantages of these kits is that you get a perfect chain line. The chain line will fall between these two cogs, so now you'll see it slightly to the left. If you go one up, it's slightly to the right, so it's literally a perfect chain line.